OK, fingers on buzzers. Here's your starter for 10. First broadcast on the 21st of September 1962, which programme holds the record for the longest-running quiz show on UK television? Wolves and Monkman, Discworld. No, you lose five points. The programme often features extremely difficult questions posed to some of the brightest young minds in British academia. King's Rashid. Neoplatonism. What? No. Don't despair, Jeremy. The answer is, of course, University Challenge. And tonight we'll be marking 60 years since its very first broadcast. Hello again, and another needle match tonight. We'll reacquaint ourselves with the outstanding players of the game to hear their stories. Corpus Christi Trimble. Epiphytes. Epiphytes is correct, yes. We'll reveal some of the programme's insider secrets. That's live. Jesus Agarwal. Like, it blows my mind. And we'll find out who can get their starter for ten again. These are, these are my questions. Yeah, yes. I can't believe I got that on telly. Oh, I'm out of practice, I think. <laughs> City Challenge at 60. Beginning in 1962 and hosted by the late Bamba Gascoigne. Well, welcome again to University Challenge. University Challenge has been on our screens for 60 years. I love the show because, you know, let's be blunt, I'm a bit of a know it all. I revere education, I revere trivia. I love joining in, and, and obviously everybody else does as well. Strathclyde Welsh. Beethoven. Beethoven is correct, yes. Today, the student series of 37 episodes runs for over eight months of the year. That theme tune, obviously, it's completely iconic. And it really does get, get you in the mood. I mean, you know that it's Monday, 8.30, and uni challenge is on. Well, I can't sing it, but, but yes, I do know it. And Roger Tilling's inimitable voice comes in at that moment. <laughs> University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, and welcome to another intellectual duel as a university college takes on a red brick university giant. In tonight's match, one institution is making its University Challenge debut. Jeremy Paxman is an icon. Jeremy Paxman is a legend. I mean, he's been doing the game for so long. In fact, it was in 1994 when Jeremy began asking the questions. Manchester Bryant. Is it Honduras? No, it isn't. It's south of there. It's Panama. The great catchphrases. Fingers on the buzzer, here's your first start of a ten. We like to hear them. Fingers on buzzers, here's your first start of a ten. In exactly the same way, every time. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start of a ten. The format has barely changed over six decades. But Jeremy's style of presentation brought something new to the programme. You see old Tush Chuck Smith. William the First. No! It's the longest modulation of a sneer. No! <laughs> ever heard in British broadcasting. Faraday. No, that was James Clark Maxwell. After that conspicuously bad effort, we'll take another starter question. Getting on Jeremy's wrong side is a terrifying prospect. David Copperfield. No, it's little Dorrit. Everybody knows that. <laughs> But when a contestant gets an answer that is particularly good or impressive, he lets you know. Trinity Morley. Uh, Margaret Thatcher. How did you know I was going to ask for the longest period of time? Well, what else is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's see if you get these bonuses right. <laughs> Jeremy has decided that the 2022 to 23 series will be his last as presenter. Jeremy Paxman has been in that hot seat for 28 years now. He's just been high quality throughout. Jeremy would have made a very, very, very good geography teacher, there's no doubt about that. Or oh, history teacher, perhaps. After over 1,000 episodes, Jeremy will take with him fond memories of many players. He who lives by the sword shall <laughs> perish by the sword. You would have made a wonderful revivalist preacher, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't just the host who took note of this captain of a Cambridge team. Hi, I'm Eric Monkman. I'm from Oakville, Canada. I studied economics at Wolfson College, Cambridge from 2015 to 2016. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first start of a 10. I didn't watch it as it was broadcast, 
but I saw the reaction on Twitter, actually. And everyone was saying how loud I spoke. Discworld! That I was shouty. Zero! You know, there was an intensity and almost a frightening aspect to my demeanor. Steven? So I really couldn't tell, did people like me or did they find me incredibly annoying? Blunt. But I realized, yeah, okay, I think they kind of do like me. Mao Zedong? People were starting to make memes of me. Sicily. Somebody made a request. Could somebody give me Monkmen saying Copenhagen? So I saw that request and I actually made a new video of myself just saying Copenhagen. And I, I, I posted it for her and I know mean, oh, she was happy. <laughs> As a result of my appearance on University Challenge, a hashtag Monkmania started trending on Twitter. Post hoc ergo propter hoc? No, nah, Fred, you lose five points. So this is the jumper here I wore on every game of University Challenge. Macbeth? People wondered why. It's because I didn't want to expend any mental energy deciding what to wear ahead of a match. I wanted to reserve it all for the game. And? This is indeed a lucky jumper for me. It's the Milohovic discontinuity. Nope. But I think there was an appreciation that I was playing the game well and a true affection for what I had to offer. So that, that's more important to me than, than a hashtag. Copenhagen. Correct. In 2021, it was the mellifluous tones of a young man from Daventry that sent Twitter into meltdown. Hello, I'm Atia Rashid. I'm from Daventry in Northamptonshire. I uh, studied at King's College London and I did a bachelor's degree in philosophy. What modern term denotes a school that emerged in the third century AD, one of its key texts being the Enneads of Plotinus? King's Rashid. Neoplatonism. Correct. <laughs> So lots of people commented on my voice and that they liked listening to me, and so that was a pleasant surprise nonetheless. Uh, the Road to Wigan Pier. Correct. Debs says, I love Rashid's beautiful voice. He makes the Queen sound common. I think that was a theme. Lots of people said that, making the Queen sound common, which of course is an absolutely ridiculous thing to say, but, you know, I very much appreciated it. And I, you know, I am aware that I speak in a somewhat, you know, posh manner, and I'm, you know, guess comfortable with that. King's Rashid. The Muslim Brotherhood. Correct. Sarah says, uh, I have a voice like warm honey, which I think is a really, really lovely description, actually. I very much like that. Is it Frida Kahlo? It is Frida Kahlo, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. Jason says that uh, I have a lovely voice and manner and that my parents must be proud, which I think is very, very touching. King's Rashid. Christopher Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe is correct, yes. And Lisa says, I could listen to Rashid's voice all day. Well, there are plenty of people in my life who do have to listen to me all day, and it wears off quite quickly, I assure you. So, uh, I'll say that. King's Rashid. Deuterium. For many viewers, the biggest question was how Atiyab had obtained his impossibly perfect accent. No one in my family speaks like this. No one from my school either really speaks like this. And my favorite teacher at school was Mr. Wharton. He had quite a posh voice. He was Cambridge educated and I really admired him. and I really looked up to him. And so I think subtly over the course of those seven years, I started taking on more and more of his mannerisms and even some of his vocal tics. And so sometimes by the end of my time there, people would say it was genuinely uncanny how similar I had made my accent to his. And I think that's the honest answer. For students and viewers alike, there is one very distinctive part of the University Challenge format that features a man often heard but seldom seen. New Milk Chair. A lot of people think that it's a recording, that when you press the button and... Durham Parkinson. That that's recorded, that's live. Jesus Agarwal. Like, it blows my mind. New Milk There's tenable excitement in Roger's voice. Jesus Tindall. I'm Roger Tilling, and I'm the voice of University Challenge, the disembodied voice, well, normally, apart from today. 
So this stylish marble finish is our current set. The previous set was my favourite because it had a very stylish walnut finish. It was like the dashboard of a Bentley. High quality. It was back in 1997 when Roger began his career at Granada Television in Manchester. I was a continuity announcer. So that's one of those people that kind of pops up in between the programmes, you know, saying, well, there's trouble in store for Deirdre next in Coronation Street, next on Granada. And then one thing led to another. And I got the role of the voice of University Challenge from that. Roger has now been the resident announcer. Madeline McClements. Wings. Wings is correct, yes. For over 20 years. Kings Rashid. Ethiopia. And so today the set is like a home from home. Over here, this is the hot seat. This is mission control, the, where the PAX Master General sits. God, the, the power. The feeling of power sitting in this stylish leather finish armchair. It's quite amazing. You can see everything from here. We've got monitors, so uh, Jeremy can see the scores. He can also see the picture going out in the picture round. I instantly feel incredibly powerful here. Come on! Well, in relation to Jeremy's desk, I'm actually up there in a pigeon loft. And we used to have elastic band fights. And then they moved us further apart, like two naughty children. I don't have any monitors or anything. I've got a team over there on the left that got a bell. Uh, the team on the right has a buzzer. And then the rest is down to me, really. You number it. So I'm kind of like a coiled spring, I suppose, waiting uh, for someone to buzz in. New numbers. And the important thing is I've got to be in and out before they give their answer. It's an Edmund Hall Leo. Sculpture. It also speeds up towards the end of the programme. Corpus Christi Master. Chihuahua. Otherwise, it would just sound like the post office, you know, cash in number two, please. So we try and avoid that. New numbers. Chicago. Oh, the perils of this job. I think um, the long surnames, definitely. Imperial Rubio Gorechetegi. Pangolin. Rubio Gorechetegi, I think was my favorite. UCL Tushchuk Smith. Pilot. Uh, Tushchuk Smith. Trinity Tarnoshek Zorko. The uh, second defenestration of Prague. I think the great thing about what I do is I, I can walk down the street and nobody knows who I am, which is great. And why should they? <laughs> Jesus Angle. I get recognised by my voice occasionally. I can't switch off. <laughs> this is how I sound. So <laughs> I just have to live with it. I haven't got my reading glasses, so I might hold a bit like this. NGC 1760 and the Tarantula Nebula are both highly active regions of star formation, about 160,000 light years away, in which satellite galaxy of the Milky Way? I still, to this day, could not tell you how I knew this. King's Rashid. Is it the large Magellanic Cloud? It is indeed, yes. I was genuinely amazed to have gotten it, and I know that people, when they watched it, were particularly fond of this question, partly because it's so unexpected for someone with a philosophy degree to know about astrophysics. What number results from adding the number of noble truths of Buddhism to the number of pillars of Islam? I think it's the four noble truths and the five pillars, so nine. Le Morgan Le Bet. Twelve. Nope. Yeah, the eightfold path rather than the four noble truths. But yet again, it shows 31-year-old me doesn't get it right. 56-year-old me remembers getting it wrong and getting it right this time. It's goodbye from Glamorgan. Goodbye from yeah. Goodbye from King's College London. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. This isn't just trivial knowledge. The show in itself represents the way in which a university degree can change you as a person. I'm Sandhya Narayan Swami. I went to the University of Leicester for my undergraduate and I studied biological sciences. Sandhya moved to America back in 1981 and today lives and works in Los Angeles. My most recent position was at Caltech where I was director of foundation relations and that's where I discovered the Caltech Flying Club. So I decided I would join the Flying Club and learn to fly a plane because sometimes Opportunities only come your way once in a lifetime, 
And if you don't take them, they'll never come back. So I thought I'm going to do this. Sanja's life is now a far cry from her experiences growing up in the 1960s in Southall, West London. The racism at my grammar school was just appalling. The kids used to play a game. If I passed anyone in, in, in the corridor and I got too close to them, they would go, oh, injected, and run away laughing. So I was, I was a virus and they were basically vaccinated against me. So it turned me from a very outgoing, um, self-directed, ambitious kid into this very frozen person. To keep away from the bullies, Sanjia found her sanctuary in books. I went to the library, I read a lot. So it's just something I did. I just have a very retentive memory and good recall. At the age of 18, Sanjia was offered a place at the University of Leicester and finally found herself among like-minded people. So these were smart kids who were ambitious and who were scientists, and I didn't get any of that racism. There was none. So I did very, very well. Less to save my sanity. And it was while studying that Sanjay saw the opportunity to take part in TV's most demanding quiz. I was a fan. You know, I never missed the show, and, you know, I knew I could answer the questions. I thought, I'm going to go do this. But despite her enthusiasm, there was still a cultural barrier to overcome. Indian women of my generation didn't do this stuff. I don't remember seeing any people of colour. I don't remember seeing any other Asians. It was very much guys on the show. Oriol Fulford Jones. Oliver Cromwell. Correct. Undeterred, in 1974, Sanjay became the first Asian woman to appear on University Challenge. It was just a wonderful experience. I was totally proving myself. Although the recordings of her matches no longer exist, no bad luck. Sanjay still has many fond memories. University Challenge helped me get my real self back. This person who is willing to take a risk go out and do something different, even if she crashes and burns. You know, you've got to try. In the early 2000s, University Challenge would also have a profound effect on another contestant who was born and bred in Bolton. I'm Jenny Ryan. I attended University of Leeds and I studied law. I'd really been struggling when I was at uni with my mental health and didn't really have many friends. And someone was putting these posters up. It was a parody of The Shining. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to go for it because I grew up in Granada land, as they called it. And all my favorite shows were made at Granada Studios. It was in 2002 that Jenny found herself in front of television cameras for the very first time. I was very relaxed. I really enjoyed being in the studio because I loved television my entire life, so this was a peek behind the curtain. Hi, I'm Jenny Ryan. I'm from Bolton in Lancashire, and I'm reading law. And I think that made me quite an outlier because <laughs> most other people were very, very anxious and made silly mistakes based on that. Which golfer ranked 62nd in the world in May 2002 and the highest ranked English player? First came uh, to prom... John Moore's Laycock. Nick Faldo. Now, I'm afraid you lose five points. First came to prominence in the 1998 Open Championship at Royal Birkdale as an amateur... Leeds Ryan. Justin Rose. Justin Rose is right. <laughs> Why I went in on a golf question, I'm not sure, but I got it right. <laughs> just suddenly felt the instinctive urge to press the buzzer. And a lot of quizzes will know you can't ignore that. Leeds Ryan. Edgar Allan Poe. Correct, well done. Having won their first two matches, Leeds booked themselves a quarter-final battle against Worcester College, Oxford. We finally got to face an Oxbridge College, which was kind of our fear, because we knew that Oxford and Cambridge have quiz societies. They take the quizzing very seriously. Hello, welcome to the last quarter-final in this series. At stake tonight, the one remaining place in the second semi. And 
we absolutely smashed them. Which 1925 novel by Anita Luce was turned into a musical comedy containing the number Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend? Leeds Ryan. Gentlemen prefer blondes. That's correct. You get three questions <laughs> on political donations. Leeds. We're beaten by 100 points. This the College Oxford, 130. Leeds has 230. Even we were astonished by that, but not as astonished as they were. Unfortunately, we, we, we failed at the last hurdle and faced some very tough opposition in the semi-final. Well, bad luck, Leeds. Pretty distinguished to go out in the semi-final, I think. But I'm still really proud that we made it that far. It's been 20 years since she appeared on University Challenge, but today, for Jenny, quizzing is a full-time job. Here she comes. It is the Bolton Brainiac. It is Jenny the Vixen Ryan. I've got to say, on form recently. Who knew that buzzing in on a golf question... Just in rows. ..would lead to such a big change in my life. I don't know where I would be without University Challenge. Queen's Barber. Over its six decades, University Challenge has displayed not only the intellectual acumen of the UK students, but also their sharp sense of style. Uh, 1936. That's correct. Ooh. The prize for the most eccentrically dressed team must go to Sydney, Sussex, Cambridge, led by Sir David Liddington. We felt that there was a need for a bit of theatre, so we deliberately set out to dress in descending order of sartorial elegance. So you have John Gilmore at one end wearing a formal college garb, and then John Adams wore a, a three-piece suit, who was sort of next in line, and I had an uh, open-necked um, shirt and sort of jacket, and Nick Graham, who had sort of really long hair and a shaggy beard anyway, he wore a caftan and a string of beads around his neck. And it, and it got attention. And I think the producers said to us that they had a big response. And I think the, the sort of theatre was a part of that. My name is Alex Budd. Uh, I was a student at Christchurch in Oxford. In the 2007 to 8 series, his team's winning run allowed Alex to display his extensive costume collection. Good evening. I'm Alex Budd. I'm from London. And I'm reading English literature. In the first episode, I was wearing what appeared to be a fur coat. Good evening. I'm Alex Bubb. I'm from London and I'm reading English literature. The second episode, I think it was a, a naval sailor jacket. Uh, after that, a leather biker jacket. Good evening. I'm Alex Bubb. I'm from London and I study English literature. For the final, I brought back the fur coat. Good evening. I'm Alex Bubb. I'm from London and I'm reading English. And then when I stood up at the end, it was then revealed that it was not really a fur coat. It was a kind of fur bolero, the sort of thing that Liza Minnelli might wear. <laughs> well done, well done. The best compliment I received after the programme was, I'm so glad to see that students still dress like students. <laughs> Perhaps surprisingly, Alex didn't follow a career in fashion. And today, at the University of Roehampton, he's a senior lecturer in English. But when he took up his appointment in 2017, he made a distressing discovery. No Roehampton team has appeared in the past in the university's history on the University Challenge, so I wanted to change that. And so Alex set about creating a community of quizzing with the goal of getting a Roehampton team... Hello, guys. ..into the competition. So just want to try that one, Catherine? And... Yeah. Brilliant. OK. The way I'd run a session draws on my experience of being in the Oxford University Quiz Society, which is that it should be fun, but imitating the pressurised environment of the studio of the University Challenge. Which novel of 1961 by the US writer Richard Yates was adapted into a film of 2008. Oh, no. I'm going to say Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but that's wrong. That's not a bad guess, but <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's what we're going for yeah, now. We're going yeah. for the quick guesses. The point of a practice session like this is to cultivate two things. One is the, at the individual level. Sanskrit. Sanskrit is right. Well done. When to buzz, when to go with your gut feeling, and when to, when to hold off for another second. Monaco. It's right, yes. <laughs> and more importantly, the group dynamic, the team working together as a group. I just think if you do that five or six times in a row and get it wrong, you're going to lose confidence, aren't you? Well, that's what you do, I think, to learn. You overextend yourself. And I want to also defy people who 
who don't imagine that a good team could emerge from a university like this. I mean, this is a university that has almost 10,000 students. In a group of 10,000 people, you'll be able to find four people who can answer quiz questions. It's just brilliant to have uh, Alex's expertise and uh, how you deal with those kind of things, because that's about the pressure. So he can give us all the fantastic tips from when he was on the show um, a few years ago now. Price Church Bar, Republican. Correct. We made an application that first year. That team didn't proceed to the televised programme, and likewise the second year. In the third year, we did. In tonight's match, one institution is making its University Challenge debut. Let's meet the team from Roehampton. It would be fun to be a bit of a giant killing team. Look out for Roehampton. <laughs> As Alex dreams of taking Roehampton to glory, you could take note from another former player who, since 2004, has achieved a remarkable record in the competition. Manchester Pearson. Paganini. Paganini is correct. Let me give the best by the devil. Stephen Pearson, University of Manchester. In 1997, Stephen Pearson and the Manchester team lost in their semi final. I thought I want to carry on being involved in University Challenge, but I can't be a competitor. And I thought, I know, I will become the coach for the Manchester team. That was about 25 years ago, and I'm still doing it. I just enjoy the excitement of watching my protégés taking part and hoping they'll do well. Ciao. Ciao. Bang. <laughs> Stevens often referred to as the Alex Ferguson of University Challenge, and every season he coaches their University Challenge team. And perhaps unsurprisingly, given that kind of high memory and training, it's a rare year they don't make the semi finals. They, they, they must be the powerhouse of University Challenge, certainly in the Jeremy Paxman era. Manchester University has a distinguished record on this programme, having won the competition three times, and it is, of course, the current holder of the trophy. I'm Richard Gilbert. I went to Manchester University and I studied linguistics. Stephen Pearson selected Richard to captain his 2012 team. I think the most significant pressure that was on my shoulders was the legacy of Manchester University. And their record in that sort of 10-year period before I appeared was insane. What was defined by Buckminster Fuller as a... Manchester Bryce. The Bucky ball. I'm afraid you lose five points, very short order. That's your one shot on University Challenge and you have a bad day. Then that's inked in for forever. Right, ten points for this. It's no part of a Prime Minister's duty to take a country into a war which he thinks he can't win. These words were attributed to which... Manchester Gilbert. Eden? No, you lose five points. They were 100 points ahead of the halfway mark. Which toothed whales have only two teeth at the upper jaw tip? Oh, no more. Correct. Right, another starter question. Ten points for this, see if you can get going with it, Manchester. And at that point, you think to yourself, well, it's one thing not to, not to carry on Manchester's great legacy. It's another thing to be the worst ever team on the show. Bear Paul, Wheeler and Burgess are among words that may describe formations or varieties of... Manchester Bar. Shale. Shale is correct, yes. <laughs> OK, you're off the mark. Well, you're on the mark now. Uh, <laughs> here are your bonuses. And then we just managed to sort of keep up with them on starters. And which novel by Christos Cholkas tells of an altercation at a barbecue between a young boy and an adult and the effect... Manchester Gilbert. Slap. The slap is correct, yes. <laughs> Manchester Bar. A ground poke. Correct. <laughs> Manchester Bra. Pinner. Pinner is correct, yes. We did well enough on bonuses that for every starter we won. Manchester Brown. Arkansas and Illinois. Correct. We were just catching up a little bit faster than they were moving away. Manchester Bar. Gauss. Gauss is correct, yes. And we knew we were close. I think we may have been level at this point. Sado is the sixth largest island of which country? And we had the answer to the first bonus, but talked ourselves out of it. Japan. Quickly. Yeah. Come on. Canada. No, it's Japan. And the second one was the one that, oh, still to this day, makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Reaching the Atlantic Ocean near the city of Setubal, the Sadu is a major river of which country? And then I say it on the gong. Portugal. Portugal is correct. <laughs> and we go five points up and win. I thought there was no possibility of you winning that <laughs> for much of the contest. Yeah. I bet you did too, when you're minus 10. 
Despite their shaky start, Richard's team went on to become that year's series champions, extending Manchester's remarkable winning streak. At the gong, University College London have 140 and Manchester University have 190. You're never beaten until the gong goes, um, which is hard to believe sometimes, but it is true. This was my favourite question. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, this, this, is, this is gloriously self-indulgent, Claire. I'm going to love this, sorry. Radioactive isotope X decays in a single step to stable isotope Y. Starting with a pure sample of X, if after one day there are seven times more atoms of Y than of X, what is the half-life of isotope X? A good question. Like, <laughs> it's a really good question. Durham Parkinson. Um, I like that question because I could answer it. So a third of a day. It is a third of a day. I think it's good to have questions that you work out on the spot as well as memory questions because then it's testing like your ability rather than just your memory. And I like that question. <laughs> Described as a Greek soldier by Homer. And as a slave by Shakespeare in Troilus and Cressida, Thersites. Buzz. Right, this is one of those ones where I thought the answer was going to be Thersites. Uh, and then I must have sort of moved for the buzzer and then Jeremy had just said Thersites. Corpus Christi Trimble. So I was left trying to come up with what on earth is the answer. And so I expect you can sort of see me saying... Rudeness. Because Thersites is a character um, in, in the Iliad, certainly. I don't know Troilus and Cressida very well, but anyway, I'm sure he's a slave there, who is incredibly rude. Um, and and that, that was sort of my guess. Yes, vulgarity of speech, thersitical, yes. And I don't know what Jeremy had written on his card, but he decided to give it to me. It's goodbye from Corpus Christi College, Oxford. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Durham University. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. During each series of University Challenge, Jeremy Paxman will ask the students over 600 starters. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. And 1,800 bonuses. Your bonuses now are on the Irish national cricket team. <laughs> We've gone beyond the classic quiz syllabus that it probably was back in Bamber Gascoigne's day. How many rode, according to Tennyson, into the valley of death? Keel Stevens. 600. 600, 10 points to Keel. The questions are much more broad in scope, so you could be asked about literally anything. It takes brains to answer them, but also brains to write them. I'm Janet Crompton, and I am a question writer for University Challenge. Since 1994, Janet has served up over 7,000 questions for the competition. But where do her ideas come from? Inspiration can strike at any time, really. Somebody might just mention something in a conversation. It's really weird how your brain works. I'm a huge Pet Shop Boys fan, so if I can throw them in anywhere, I do. And in West End Girls, there's a lyric. From Lake Geneva to the Finland Station. And you might think, well, you know, why, why is that a question? But then I discovered that that was the route... ..taken by Lenin when he was smuggled into Russia during the First World War. So I started with that fact, and obviously the answer that we wanted was... West End Girls? It is West End Girls, yes. Janet is the longest serving of the 11 freelance question setters commissioned for the current series. But the newest recruit is a 23-year-old recent graduate who lives in Solihull. I'm Dan Tacky and I write some of the questions for the University Challenge. He just he knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> When I stumbled across the University Challenge, I think I'm, I must have been in secondary school, um, so I'd always watch with my brother. I remember my favourite round was one time, there was three bonuses on outlines of Formula One tracks. Ten points if you can name the circuit. Manchester Joyce. Monaco. That's when I was like, this is, this is my show. Dan's first questions will soon be appearing on screen. But what's inspired him? 
So one of my main goals in terms of writing the questions was to increase the diversity of questions that were available. For example, you'll hear about Rosa Parks, but you won't learn about the Bristol bus boycotts. Just add some colour to the questions. And I think I was hopefully able to deliver that. Obviously, we all try to make the questions as interesting as possible. Nobody wants a so what question. University Challenge is very unique in the sense of it prizes itself on intellectual knowledge of knowing so much about so many things. It is University Challenge, so let's challenge them as best we can. St Peter's Thundo. Boeing? No. One thing the question writers can never foresee is how their questions will play out during a match. Hi, I'm Ted Loveday. I'm from Hammersmith in London, and I'm doing law. I mean, I think everybody remembers the classic Ted Loveday intervention with um, ha oh, Hapax Legomenon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was remarkable, actually, that the question made ways, because I actually I mispronounced it. Meaning said only once, what two-word Greek term denotes a word? He's loved it. Hapax legonomenon. And, and there's actually people online who've quite rightly pointed out that I kind of got it wrong. Hapax legonomenon. Correct. <laughs> Hapax legonomenon is a word that only appears once in a text. I didn't know that until Ted Loveday got that question correct. I remember one of my classics teachers explaining this really exotic phrase, sort of implying you'll never need to know this. You know, it's just a fun bit of trivia. That's sort of a response to a question of that difficulty. Maybe that will only appear once on University Challenge, you know, that level of intelligence. Well, that's actually the reason I'm grinning when I answer the question, because I'm thinking to myself, I'm just amazed that this obscure bit of knowledge has served me in any way. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on epithets used by Homer in the Odyssey. Over in New York is another player who knows the value of recondite knowledge. And today, scouring the streets of Queens, quiz-obsessive Brandon is on a typical training mission to soak up as much esoteric information as possible. So I definitely don't know everything. I mean, I don't even know 10% of 1% of 1% of everything. So that just means that everything you see is an opportunity to learn something. So it's most of what I spend my time doing. So from day to day, it's mostly just how can I get better at quiz. So here's a great example, right? This is a, a Filipino bakery, and we've got a bunch of stuff that I've really never heard of, Bolalo, corn select. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see what it is, where they eat it, what it has. And uh, if a question comes up on it any time in the next however long, I'm going to get it right. Brandon has turned quizzing into a full-time pursuit by channeling very precise ambitions. I had two goals. I wanted to uh, go to graduate school and I wanted to travel to Britain because at that time in the mid-2010s, Britain was really the epicenter of quizzing worldwide. And I remember watching an episode of University Challenge. I realized two things after watching. One, I'm very bad at this show currently but two, I could become very, very good at this show, methodically and in a short amount of time. Brandon came to Britain, enrolled on a course at Imperial College London, and landed a place on their University Challenge team. Hi, I'm Brandon, out of Jamaica, Queens, New York City, doing a master's in computing. But the hard work had only just begun. I've been a pretty serious quizzer for a few years at that point, but I was completely new to British quizzing. So I'm out to learn all of British history in 18 months. Where do you start? I don't know. <laughs> you can't just go get a book. British history is a lot longer than American history. Which is the only year in British history to have seen four different prime ministers hold office. Imperial Brandon. 1834. Correct. So I sort of laid everything out and sort of collated everything and made myself flashcards to learn them, and then I just started learning. And then once I got those down, I sort of worked my way out. It was while transcribing previous episodes of the program that Brandon discovered another cultural divide that could scupper his plans. Paxman. So then I realized, if I don't understand what he's saying, even if I have the knowledge, I'm still gonna lose out on that buzz. 
St. John saw. Uh, Krill. Krill is correct, yes. And so I went and found a site that had his old Newsnight episode. Never apologize, never explain. The philosophy variously attributed to Wellington Disraeli and Admiral Jackie Fisher. I would go to sleep with it on, I'd have it on while I was cooking or walking around buying groceries, and I would just get used to his accent. Might have been the motto of Alastair Campbell's evidence to the Iraq inquiry today. By the time I finished listening to about 50 hours of old Newsnight episodes, hearing him was like hearing somebody that I grew up with. Imperial College London owes much of its existence to Prince Albert's attempts to crank up the cultural and scientific activities of his adopted country in the mid 19th century. Battle-hardened Brandon and the Imperial team swept away all before them. Imperial Brandon. Six. Six is correct, yes. <laughs> you look as if you find the question insulting me. No, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> Good question. Good you question. want a more difficult one? <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> I can't. My heart. <laughs> right. And soon found themselves confronting a titan of the competition. Hello. The end is nigh. Tonight's match is both the second semi-final and the penultimate match in this entire competition. In around half an hour, we'll know which team will be taking on Corpus Christi College Cambridge in the series final. It's Trinity College Cambridge, right? They've won three times. It's one of the oldest schools in Cambridge, right? When you think of ivory towers, they don't get much more ivory than Trinity. And this is the exact sort of optics that I was looking to dismantle on the show. Right, fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start of a 10. What is the only surviving mammal of the order Tubuli dentata? It is a medium-sized nocturnal African mammal with long ears, an elongated snout, and a diet of ants and termites. Imperial Brandon. Hardvark. The Hardvark is correct, yes. And I wanted to show how I was winning, not because of my education because I was more clever, but because I studied more than you. Imperial Brandon. Oh. Rob Roy. Rob Roy is correct. We prepared harder than you, and that's why we're winning. Imperial Brandon. Dolorosa Mater. Well, accept that, yes. Imperial Brandon. Bechtel. Alison Bechtel is correct. Imperial Brandon. Um, Ad. Ad is correct, AD, yes. Imperial Brandon. Your booty. Djibouti is correct, yes. And at the wrong, Imperial College London have 235, Trinity College Cambridge have 80. Imperial, many congratulations. You, of course, go through to the final, and we should look forward to seeing you there. Not only did I want to win, but I wanted to have a clean record. No, no first round loss, no loss in the quarterfinal, just straight through, six wins, not close, trophy, ceremony, all that. And on the 20th of April, 2020, Brandon's hard work paid off when Imperial won the trophy. You are very impressive, Imperial. You are the 2020 University Challenge champions. If you want to get good at quiz, don't worry about, oh, well, I'm not clever enough. You know, if you can get access to resources to start practicing, that's what's important. You can always outwork talent. Imperial Brandon. The Korean Peninsula. Correct. Sorry, it's so easy for you. Hey, no, no, we've been through this. If people want to say I'm clever, fine. I'm more concerned with people knowing that if I go and I win a quiz, it's because I train. These are, these are my questions. Yeah, yes, Jeremy. OK. Yes, there we go. 10 points for this, traditionally regarded as a holy relic. The Iron Crown of Lombardy is housed. Walter Monkman. It's housed in Italy somewhere, <laughs> sorry. I mean, it's the, it's the one that they use to crown the king of, the king of Italy. Yes, I'm afraid that is a completely useless answer. Yeah, it is. <laughs> totally useless answer, apparently. Balliol Pot, Monza. Monza is correct, yes. I was right. With ingredients including gentian, herbs and spices. And used to flavour alcoholic drinks, which extract is now made in Trinidad? And that's where I buzzed in. Beads Ryan. Angostura bitters. Well done, yes. This is cocktail knowledge, and I think our team had already decided in negotiations if any cocktail questions come up, leave them for Jenny. It's goodbye from Leeds University. Bye bye. It's goodbye from Wilson College, Cambridge. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.
During its 60-year run, over 8,000 students have taken part in University Challenge. But could any of them be considered the greatest player of all? Every year, you get somebody who becomes renowned as whoa. There are obviously legends like uh, Alex Guttenplan. The Monkmans, the Seagulls. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Very good. Brandon Blackwell and Michael Hutchinson, who came out of nowhere on this most recent season. And the Red Hunting Hutchinson. Deer. Fanon. Franz Fanon is correct. Gail Twimble obviously just absolutely smashed it. Corpus Christi Trimble. Pride and Prejudice. Correct. I'm Gail Trimble. I was from Corpus Christi College, and I did a DPhil in Latin literature. I first became aware of University Challenge when it came back on with Jeremy Paxman. Hello, it was Oscar Wilde who remarked that, in England at any rate, education produces no effect whatsoever. My parents said, Gail, you'll like this, and we sort of watched it as a family from then on. And in 2008, age 26, Gail appeared on the show. I don't think we realised before we started filming any of the programmes quite how good we were going to be. At the gong, Durham had 95, Corpus Christi had 330. Corpus Christi 330, it was a very, very impressive performance, and who'd have thought that a classical education could be so incredibly useful to you? I think certainly for me, and probably for a, a lot of really good contestants and really good teams, it's all about buzzing in, um, particularly buzzing in early. A copy of which historical document was sold in 2000... Corpus Christi Trimble. Magna Carta. Magna Carta is right. You know, knowing what the question's going to turn into before it's finished, or sometimes before it's almost started. And, of course, you do have to be brave. Which title character of a Corpus widely... Christi Trimble. Pollyanna. No, I'm afraid you lose five points. Um, and you absolutely can buzz in and, and be convinced it's Pollyanna and the answer is Goody Two-Shoes. It, it, it happens. But that's, I, that's part of the adrenaline rush as well, perhaps. But it was Gail's individual performance in the quarterfinal match that would etch itself indelibly onto the minds of University Challenge viewers. <laughs> OK, let's not waste any time reciting the rules. Just crack on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first start of a ten. During his tenure, he wrote of the scandal flywheel whirring round in reference to the marriage of the Prince of Wales and Camilla Parker Bowles. Corpus Christi Trimble. Poet Laureate. Correct. Corpus Christi Trimble. Leg. Yep. Well done. Trimble. Epiphytes. Epiphytes is correct. Rome 1960. Correct. Ely. Ely is right. Corpus Christi Trimble. Copenhagen. Correct. Hedgehog. Hedgehog is right. Corpus Christi Trimble. Marvel. Marvel is right. Corpus Christi Trimble. Fillet. Yes. Trimble. Merchant of Venice. Indeed, they're the gold, silver and lead caskets. Of course, when you're just there, you, you're just pressing the buzzer and answering the questions and thinking, oh, great, that's another good one. Corpus Christi Trimble. Ted Heath, 1970. Correct. Corpus Christi Trimble. Bread. Correct. And then you suddenly realise how well you're doing. You think, this is very exciting. Corpus Christi Trimble. Ard Wolf. Correct. Corpus Christi Trimble. A cappella. Correct. 90 square metres. Correct. Corpus Christi College, Oxford, has 350. It's just the joy of answering the questions, really. Gail set a programme record with 15 starter questions answered in a single match. It led to a lot of attention from the media. I had various, very strange requests. Um, so the one I told a lot of people about uh, at the time was uh, now defunct Lads Mag Nuts trying to uh, get hold of me to do a tasteful photo shoot. I got invited to have a wedding makeover with Lorraine Kelly, um, which I said no to. <laughs> Um, really because, like, like a lot of the things I was saying no to, I sort of thought, well, actually, I'm quite happy with my life as it's going and I, I don't really want it to be transformed by anybody, but, but thank you very much for offering. Gail chose to stay within academia and is now a fellow in classics at Trinity College, Oxford. The students sort of sit around in these armchairs and we sit around to talk about things. People often talk to me about my appearance on University Challenge. 17-year-olds will come up to me and say, you were so great on University Challenge, and I think, but, but you were a, a tiny child when I was actually on. You must have sort of watched this on YouTube and must, must be into this, um, which is really lovely, and I am used to it, uh, and it's not like people point at me in the street anymore. Um, but I, I, I do still find it a little bit odd, but ultimately very flattering. To be or not to be, that is the question. Uh, Corpus Christi Trimble. T. T is correct. <laughs> In 2004, another Oxford college, Magdalen, were attempting to set their own record in the competition. 
For the first time in eight years, it's an Oxford and Cambridge final. And in a little under half an hour, we'll see one of them take the trophy and with it the title of series champions. If they win tonight, Magdalen will become the first institution to take the series title three times. Let's meet them again. Freya McClements, Modern History, Magdalen College, Oxford. I actually set up the team and trained the team and then suddenly we were in the final and that was really, really nerve-wracking. And then they put the trophy sitting between you, you know, so it just up the nerves, you know, and we were up against Gonville and Keys Cambridge, which were a really, really tough team. After making a strong start... Maudlin McClements. Um, Sartre. It was Jean-Paul Sartre, so you get the first set of bonuses then, Maudlin. Maudlin clung to the lead as their final match neared its conclusion. You know, we were kind of hanging on, hanging on, hanging on, and then the gong went. So at the gong, gong in this case, gong have 160. Maudlin College Oxford have 190. I remember thinking, you know, no matter what else I do in the rest of my life, I will always be a winning captain on the University Challenge. Well, bad luck, Gonville and Keys, but more than, that is a fantastic achievement. You're the first institution in the history of this programme to win the trophy three times. And then we had to sort of collect ourselves and come forward and get the, get the trophy. Congratulations, well done. Well done. It's heavy. Thank you. And I remember just taking it and lifting it above my head like this. Um, and then realising it was really heavy. As the first triple champions in the programme's history, University Challenge allowed the college to retain their trophy permanently. And today, 18 years after her team's moment of victory, Freya has returned to Oxford to see it displayed in Magdalen's new library. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it is, 2004, Magdalen College, Oxford. It was huge for us personally, but it was also huge for the college. Yeah, it is really heavy. There's no delicate way to do this, but can I? Yes, I can, lift it above my head. <laughs> Don't think it feels as heavy when you're, when you're expecting it. I love the fact that we still have the trophy and it's there. It's something that I can always come back to in the college. It's, it's like, your, it's like the, your magic passport. It was the author Bill Bryson who handed the trophy to Freya. And over its six decades, the competition has attracted numerous distinguished figures to present the laurels to the winning captains. Congratulations. Please welcome Sebastian Folks. This is Professor Sir Andrew Wiles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Stephen Hawking. To actually get to meet Stephen Hawking was, uh, was a true privilege. Many congratulations to both teams, but especially to Balliol College Oxford on becoming series champions on University Challenge, a program I have long enjoyed. I think it's pretty obvious from the smile on my face that I was really, really happy and, and moved. The author Will Self was invited onto the programme in 2015. Welcome. It's one of those opportunities and moments you sometimes get in life to step from being the fan into the arena. Can I ask you now to present them with a the trophy, please? With great pleasure. I think fondly of it now as being about as close as I probably ever got to being a national treasure. That's it. You've done it. Thank you. In 1998, it was Professor Richard Dawkins who was asked to hand over the trophy. I was delighted to be part of the ceremony because I was such an admirer of the show. Welcome. Now, what did you think? A spectacular final. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed Birkbeck's comeback at the end, but uh, Maudlin had it, and, and many congratulations. Do you think it's got anything to do with genuine knowledge, though? Yes, I'm conducting a campaign at Oxford with my colleagues to make them abolish the A-level as a criterion for admitting students and substitute university challenge. It's not the knowledge that matters, but it's the, it's the retentive mind to pick things up wherever you are. Because the kind of mind that by the age of 17 has absorbed all that knowledge is the kind of mind that I would like to teach.
When the series began in 1962, the question master was a 27-year-old English graduate from Magdalen College, Cambridge. University challenge. Asking the questions, Bamba Gascoigne. Unfortunately, only a handful of the episodes Bamba presented remain in the archives. Hello, and tonight in University Challenge, we have what is virtually a war of the roses. He had that random charm of being the genuine expert, and he always gave the impression he knew what the answers were, because he kind of did. What novel? I, I'm, I must confess I'm improvising here. I see the second part of the question was, who wrote it? I've given you that, so I have to improvise one. All right. What novel um, by Kingsley could maybe be associated with the phrase, go west, young man? Oh, Westwood Hill. Five points. Every question card had been annotated. He had personally gone and double-checked. So if you came up with an answer that was almost right but not quite right, he would tell you why you were still wrong and, 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 and explain what the correct answer was. Right. Uh, no. I'll tell you why later. Winchelsea. Winchelsea. No, bad luck. I'm afraid Winchelsea and Rye were added later. They were the two that came in later. Hastings and Romney were the other two of the original five. The young ones. In 1984, University Challenge featured in an episode of the anarchic comedy The Young Ones. The role of Bamba was played by the actor Griff Rhys Jones. In those days, I had a sort of tiny reputation as a sort of impersonator. We've been picked, right, to go on University Challenge tonight! <laughs> to the station! So they called me in and said, will you do your Bamba Gascoigne? And of course, all I could do was listen to Bamba and think, oh, this is all right. It's quite easy to do. Hello, and welcome to another edition of University Challenge. If you added the great wig and a sort of hop sack suit, you know, um, we were off. With the score still standing at 25 to nothing, here goes... I'm completely bloody sick of this! <laughs> While this episode might be regarded as a classic of British comedy, what did Bamba make of Griff's performance? I met Bamba. He was such a sweet man, such a clever, funny and polite and well-brought-up man. He never mentioned it. Now, breaking news just coming in to us. The uh, original host of BBC's University Challenge, the TV presenter and author Bamber Gascoigne, has died at his home in Richmond. He was 87 years old. Bamber Gascoigne passed away on the 8th of February 2022 and will always be remembered with fondness. The way he helped develop the show, his style, has meant that it, it's continued to attract this massive following, and that's Bamba's legacy. And until the same time next week, from me too, good night. University Challenge is now 60 years old. The show is such a British institution. University Challenge has, let's face it, more kudos than just about any other show, I would say. It's way up, sitting high on Mount Olympus with the quiz gods. Everyone likes University Challenge. Over its six decades, the programme has brought us the first TV appearances of many young people who would go on to become part of our cultural landscape. But now it invites us to wonder which remarkable students will be filling these seats in the future and what stories they will tell. We can only be sure of one thing, the questions won't get any easier. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first sign of a ten. Alneshku Quartet, take four.